Okay, so we're just going to do a few exam questions, and this one is on tree diagrams here. So it's got a bag containing nine blue balls and three red balls. There's 12 of them in total. A ball is selected at random from the bag and its colour is recorded. The ball is not replaced, so we know it's going to be conditional probability. Um, draw a tree diagram to represent the information. So the first pick and then the second pick. You can either get blue and you can get red as the other options. Now for the first pick, the probability of blue is gonna be nine twelfths and the probability of red is gonna be three twelfths. Now after a blue one has been removed, there's only gonna be 11 balls and eight of them will be blue. Three of them though will still be red. If a red one gets picked, there's gonna be nine out of the 11 that will be blue. And if a red one gets picked, only two out of the 11 are going to be red. So that's our first bit done for drawing the tree diagram. Now what he wants us to do is to find the probability that the second ball selected is red. So that means we're interested in this one being red and this one here being red. So we need to make sure we do the whole pathways to get to these bits. So the probability that the second ball is red, you know that you multiply as you go along the branches. So it's gonna be 9 twelfths times 3 elevenths plus 3 twelfths times 2 elevenths. So that's 27 plus 6 over 132, which is 33 out of 132, which I'm just going to see if that simplifies. And it's a quarter. So then the next part of the question says, find the probability that both balls are red, given that the second ball is red. So we're going to use our formula. It's going to be the probability that they are both red and that the second one is red divided by the second part, which is the probability that the second ball is red. Now, the bottom part is super easy because we've just worked it out in the previous part of the question. It's just a quarter. Now, the top part, it's saying, what's the probability that they are both red and the second one is red? Well, it's just the probability that they're both red because the second one is already red. So it's going to be 3 twelfths times 2 elevenths, which is just 6 out of 132. So I'm going to do 6 out of 132 divided by a quarter. 6 out of 132 divided by a quarter. Whoops. And we get 2 elevenths. So the probability for this is 2 elevenths. All right, let's see if we've got these right. So the tree diagram looks good. I've got 2 elevenths and we've got a quarter for the second question as well. Okay, let's try then two more questions um, and then I'll do a separate video. So here we go. This time we've got no Venn diagram, but I always like having a Venn diagram, so I'm probably going to be drawing one. And they've told us about the probability of A, the probability of B, and the probability of A and B. So I definitely want to draw a diagram for this. First thing I can fill in is the overlap, which is 0.13. Now, if this is 0.35 for A, then this is going to be 0.22. And this would have to be 0.32 to be able to get that to be 0.45 for B. And then I'll just do one minus those bits, 0 0.22, 0 0.13, 0.32. So on the outside, I get 0.33. So what it wants us to do for part A of the question is it wants us to find out the probability that it is not A, given that it's not B. Well, there's two different ways you can do this. You can either look at the area that is not B, which is this bit, and you just think how much of it is not A out of that, or you could do the formula. So I'm going to do it using the, this is going to be out of the yellow area. Now the yellow area is 0.55 and the bit that is not A is going to be 0.33. So that's 0.33 out of 0.55, which is three fifths. If you wanted to do it using the formula, then you could say it's the probability that it's not A and it's not B divided by the probability that it's not B which is literally going to be the same thing. Not A and not B is the outside. Not B is 0 0.551 minus 0 0.45. And you get the same thing, obviously, of three fifths for that. 
Now, part B, it wants us to explain why A and B are not independent. Well, we know that things are independent. There's two tests you can do for independence. You can either say that the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A, or you could say that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. Personally, I just see this one as a little bit easier for this question because they've already given us the information. So I'm going to use that one. So the probability of A and B is equal to 0.13, but the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B would be 0.35 times 0.45. And 0.35 times 0.45 is 0.1575. So we just need to say probability of A give A and B is not equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Hence A and B are not independent. Now they come in with some new information. The event C has probability of C equals 0.2. A and C are mutually exclusive. B and C are independent. Draw a Venn diagram to illustrate the events, giving the probabilities for each region. So I'm going to do a big Venn diagram here. Now they've told us that two of them are mutually exclusive, which means that they shouldn't be overlapping, and that's A and C. So I'm going to put A over here, C over here, and B is allowed to overlap them. That's a really badly drawn one. So let's see if I can use my shape drawer to make it a little bit nicer. OK. So this is A, B, and C. I've already got some of the probabilities because I did them earlier on in the question. So I've got 0 0.22, 0 0.13. I'm going to be careful, though, of this last section. Um, I'm not going to be able to fill in the 0 0.33 or the 0 0.32 because I don't know so much about them. But we do know that the probability of C is 0.2. I'm just going to remind myself that the probability of B is 0.45. So because they're independent, I can work out the probability of B and C, which is going to be 0.2 times 0.45, which is 0.09. So I can put that on my diagram. This would then have to be 0.11, so that C added up to 0.2. And then to find out that missing bit with B, I can do 0.45, take away 0.13, take away 0.09. So I know that this middle bit has got to be 0.23. Now I'm going to find out what the outside is. So I know that all of A is 0.35. I'm then going to take away the 0.23, the 0.09, and the 0.0. One. So I think it's going to be 0.22 unless I've made any calculation error there. And I need to say that S for the whole set. Then all it wants us to do is to find B or C not. The probability of B or C not. So what I could do, this is just going to be 1 minus the probability of B or C. Or I could just try and think about it on my diagram. So B or C is the green bit. So B or C not is the pink bit. Hence it being 1 minus the green bit. So you can just see those pink bits are just 0 0.44, the 0 0.22 and the 0 0.22 makes 0.44. So let's have a look and see if we got all of these ones right. We got 3 fifths for part A. Yep. We showed using this one that they're not equal to each other. You could have shown the other one, like I said. So what is it? 22, 13, 23, 9, 11, 22. 22, 13, 23, 9, 11, 22. Great. That's what we got. And then the last part, 0 0.44 for the answers on that last bit. OK, so you might like to pause and have a go at this one. This is a pretty nasty exam question just because it looks weird. But if we take it slowly, it should all work out. So the Venn diagram shows the probability of students' lunch, bo lunch boxes containing a drink, sandwiches, and a chocolate bar. D is drink, S is sandwich, C is chocolate bar, and we've got some missing probabilities of V, v U, and W. But notice how there's zero on the outside here, meaning that they all brought one of these items with them.
So the first thing it wants us to do is to write down the probability that they have brought a sandwich and they haven't bought, brought a drink with them. Well, if you look at this, the people who brought sandwiches are inside the drink loop, which tells you that if you brought a sandwich, you did bring a drink. So how many people brought a sandwich and did not bring a drink? Zero. Because if you are inside the drink loop, like the sandwiches are, then you must have, have brought a drink to school with you. So here is where the next part gets a little bit more interesting. So they've got 80 students coming to school and it says, given that all 80 lunch boxes contain sandwiches and a drink, estimate how many of these 80 lunch boxes will contain a chocolate bar. So let's just leave this 80 thing for a second, okay? They're asking you to find out something about a chocolate bar, given that they contained a sandwich and a drink. So the thing they're asking is, what's the probability that there's a chocolate bar, given that they had a sandwich and a drink? Well, let's think about this. I like thinking about this with like shading regions on the Venn diagram. So the section which is sandwiches and a drink, well, it's just the people who had sandwiches because everyone in the sandwiches section also had a drink. So that means I don't even need to use the formula. It's just going to be out of 0 0.33 plus 0.27, which is 0 0.6. And then all we need to do is see how many of those people also had a chocolate bar. So the chocolate bar is this loop. So it looks like it's just these 0 0.27 out of that group of 0 0.6. So I'm going to do 0 0.7 divided, 0 0.27 divided by 0 0.6 which is 0.45. Now that's not the end of the question because we need to deal with that information we disregarded, which was that there are 80 lunch boxes. So all we need to do is work out 0.45 out of 80 to see how many lunch boxes that will be, which is 36 lunches. So 36 lunch boxes. It's really annoying that they do that bit with the 80, kind of gets in the way. So for part C, it says, given that the events C and S, sorry, the events S and C are independent and that P of D given C is 14 over 15, find out all of these values that we've got here. So as soon as I know that S and C are independent, I'm going to write down the independence law, which is the probability that S and C is going to be equal to the probability of S multiplied by the probability of C. So the probability of S and C is going to be, let's just erase this for a second. This is the S loop, this is the C loop, so it's the overlap, which is 0 0.27. The probability of S is 0 0.33 and 0 0.27, which is 0 0.6. And the probability of C is 0 0.27 plus U plus V. Now I'm going to solve this equation by dividing by 0 0.6. So I'm going to have 0.27 divided by 0.6, and then I'm going to subtract the 0.27 to find out what u plus v is equal to. So I'm going to do 0.27 divided by 0.6, and I'm going to minus 0.27 so that u plus v is equal to 0.18. And I've kind of finished now. There's nothing more I can do with this. So I'm going to think about the next part, which is that the probability of d, given that it's c, is equal to 14 over 15. So let's think about what the formula is. You can either do Venn diagram or you can do formula. It's going to be the probability of D and C divided by the probability of C. Well, D and C is what they tell us in the question. Sorry, D given C is 14 over 15. D and C, looking back at this, this is D, this is C. So D and C is the overlap which is 0.27 plus V. And the probability of C is 0.27 plus U plus V. And I'm hoping what you might notice here is that we know that U plus V is 0.18. So we get 14 over 15 equals 0.27 plus V over 0.27 plus 0.18 which is 0.45. So this equation I can solve by doing 
14 over 15 multiplied by 0.45 and then I can subtract 0.27 to find out what V is. So I'm going to do 14 over 15. I'm going to multiply it by 0.45 and then I'm going to subtract 0.27 so that I get that V is equal to 0.15. Well, if I know that V is 0.15, then U must be 0.18 minus 0.15, which is 0.03. So we're doing pretty well here because they wanted U, V and W. Well, we've got what V is, we've got what U is, we just need to find out what W is. So I'm going to come back to my diagram. I'm going to fill in some of these numbers that we know. So U is 0.03, V is 0.15. And W is what we're looking for. Well, we know everything in the diagram has to add up to 1. So I'm going to add up everything and take it away from 1 to find out what W is. So I'm going to do 1 take away 0 0.33, 0 0.27, 0 0.15, and 0 0.03. And so that W is 0 0.22. So my last thing is that W equals 0 0.22. And that's seven marks because there's an awful lot of questions here. Notice how I just started off by talking about the independence. I did some work on it. Then I looked at the given that. I did some work on it. Then I did some simultaneous equations. And then I did another fact, which is that they all add up to one. So let's check it out. We've got zero, 36, and then these answers. Zero, 36, and then 0 0.03, 0 0.15, and 0 0.02. So I'll just leave those up so you want to have a look at the mark scheme about how that's done there. A really, really difficult question, um, particularly because I think the fact that the sandwiches section is inside the drink section, I think is unusual. But hopefully we're able to work out what that meant.